So, the final three battles that we have for the night. Extremely dope ones. So, next battle we got Heartless versus Weapon. Now, we know who Weapon is, but just for the sake, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So, Heartless being unorthodox, grimy, catty, and buck. Weapon being buck, unorthodox, conceptual, and abstract. So, all due respect to Heartless, my obvious vote for the win is going to be Weapon. It's heavy hitter. Um, I do apologize if he's known as a veteran out in Cali. All I know, he's definitely one of the coldest and the most unique crumpers to ever exist. I don't really care how much you feel about it, but it's extremely obvious. The man made his own lane, so much respect to him. Uh, so, watching this battle, in my personal opinion, is like genuinely going to be like watching Israel Adesanya versus Anderson Silva in his prime. Hear me when I say that, Anderson Silva in his prime. I'm not talking about the one that we just recently saw when these two actually fought. I'm talking about in his prime. And in his prime, Anderson Silva was the GOAT. The GOAT. Unbeatable. That's no disrespect to all the other veterans and the creators and the OGs and stuff like that. Because I know y'all get hella tight about that type of stuff. It's okay. Relax. Calm down. Okay? Don't play with me. Let's just have a seat and enjoy the predictions. This is what we're doing here. So with this particular battle, both share a lot of common similarities, both extremely uh, musically inclined in their own particular ways. Uh, I know Weapon has his own uh, method of movement, you know, when it comes to Crump and whatever um, experience that he brings, maybe from other genres of dance, I'm not sure, or if he's just been a lifetime Crumper. If he is, no, no disrespect, nothing wrong with that in any way, shape, or fashion. But I do definitely know that uh, Broderick does bring a lot of freestyle in, um, knowledge and experience of the game and he is pro extremely proficient in juking as well so obviously he has no ankles is what I'm trying to say to you um, what I hope to see in this particular battle is a ruthless weapon let me say that again what I genuinely hope to see in this battle is a ruthless weapon now I don't know if I'm the only person who's noticed this maybe it's just me but if you notice, like, Weapon never really tries to go in and kill people like that. And follow, follow me when I say this. I'm, I'm not jumping out the window or nothing like that. I'm not, I'm not tripping, but just, just follow me for a second. If you notice, like, every time that Weapon dances, he always dances. He always puts out the amount of energy that his opponent reciprocates. Just think about it. Last time that I saw him in Arizona, I do apologize. I can't remember the gentleman that he battled, but I was I definitely watched the battle and I was kind of like, I don't know if Weapon's kind of like just taking it easy on him or maybe he's tired or whatever the case may be. But I know definitely when it comes to Weapon, Weapon always dances just enough to beat you or just to make your style look useless. I don't know. That sounds like Goon style ripper if you ask me. But then again, that could just be weapon. I do know that there are certain people like that who are not in the business of just simply trying to beat up on people, knowing good well if their opponent is clearly of, of a lesser caliber than they are. And that's not a shot towards Heartless in any way, shape, or fashion, or any of the other opponents. I definitely know that you you definitely went in, you know, I seen, you know, when you battled uh Kif Quinga. You know, definitely went in, you know, when he was battling Hurricane and stuff like that. But I, we never really get to see, like, Weapon, like, really snap. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like Weapon go like an OD Weapon. That's personally, I, w I would love to see that. Now, with that being said, Broderick, you just might have to bring that out of him. Excuse me, Heartless. You might just have to bring that out of him, bro. It just seems, like, personally, in my opinion, like... Weapons kind of got a soft spot for his opponents. He'll look at them and be like, oh, he's trying his heart out. That's okay. I'll stop it right at a minute 45. Nah, trying to see that. I want to see a weapon that's going in for the kill. With re Again, with respect to Heartless. But I want to I see a, a one-round weapon. 
a kill off weapon. I'm I'm not trying to see this battle past the first round. Okay, and I'm and with respect, I'm I'm doing this out of love for for Heartless. You know what I'm saying? That's like the little brother. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Heartless outside all day. We in here. But Broderick, you at the Heartless? You gonna come up with your A game, brother man? I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that. You know what I'm saying? Cause weapon is definitely one of my favorites for sure. I admire what he brings to the table. I've attempted his groundwork. It doesn't work for me. Too fat. I'm just simply putting that out there so that you're aware. But, uh, Hollis, I'm going to need you to come with that, bro. Weapon in Southside. Yeah, we're going to need that, homeboy. So, but again, shouts out to Hollis because I feel like this, in my personal opinion, this is a nice battle for him because this is like a, a nod towards, you know, next generation um like i said before i feel like these two share a lot of common similarities so it's, it's kind of like a nod between generations and kind of like more like a welcome to the table now i'm not saying that this means that you're a heavy hitter or people are just going to acknowledge you all of a sudden but let's just be perfectly honest you definitely have something unique that you bring to the table so i think that this is a perfect opportunity brother for you to show your best stuff okay so get out there and strut. I don't care what you got to do. Put some hot Louisiana hot sauce on that. If you catch my drip. Okay. Get out there. Do what you got to do, man. Stretch your stuff, homeboy. Hold it down for the south side. Next battle we got. Ah, Livewire versus Rex. I'm not even going to bother going into the characteristics for these two individuals. Um, you should know. I really didn't even have to do it for weapon, but I did it anyway, just again as a nod towards Heartless. Live Wire and Rex. This is a, it's a steep one. Very, very steep. Starting with the prediction. My prediction for this, I'm edging it to Rex. With that being said, I'm edging it to Rex on the basis that, let's just be honest, Livewire might have some ring rust. And that, again, again, don't, don't, don't get upset. Don't get upset about that. I ain't got nothing against Livewire. Livewire is easily one of the coldest crumpers out of the South. Arguably the best. No shade against him in no way, shape, form, or fashion. But I ain't seen him crump since the real six so now with that being said live wire has always been somewhat of a hermit you know when it comes to his craft so he often does kind of duck off away from the uh, facebook or public eye for a while and comes back and just slay shit that's just, that's just what he does which i respect yo if it works for you work for you you know what i'm saying so we'll just have to see how that goes um but that's definitely in my personal opinion like that one, I can't sit here and just say, like, oh, it's, it's going to be a last. Like, I, I can't say that. Live wire is, I, I don't, I've never seen him get washed. Ever. At least not that I can remember. Maybe he went out to Cali or something like that and something happened behind his closed doors, but I've, I've never seen him get washed ever. Um, I think the biggest variable here is simply just based off of what kind of live wire we're going to get. Rex will always put his best foot forward, depending on the, uh, of course, obviously, depending on the opponent he gets. If he, if they're a threat, they're a threat, it is what it is. You know, he's going to put extra effort into making sure that he's on his A game. But when it comes to, you know, just normal opponents, you know, he's going to put his best foot forward. Again, his best foot forward is always going to be there. He might just put two, depending on how he feels. I can't say this is a clear-cut match because there's such a difference in, between these two and styles and what they bring to the table. Rex being the theatrical and charismatic crumper, Livewire being the sleeping dragon who's known for liveness and his natural get off. You know my saying, I think it's uh it's just gonna come down to whoever's the best version of themselves. This is a steep, steep, steep battle. Steep battle. But hear me when I say this. 
hear me closely because like the one thing that I do not want to see in this battle only one thing do not turn this into a buddy buddy battle don't I don't want to see a, oh let's get off together brother let's come on share let's go let's nah I've got that I want to see somebody fight I want to see somebody fall I want to see somebody get worn around or killed off that's that's what I want to see this in my personal opinion this has the potential to be the battle of the year personally in my opinion because it's such a styles clash I do not want to see it turn into a let's get off together battle please don't do that and I'm, ask, I'm asking as a fan here don't do that please oh my god I swear I, I get up and walk out I, I grab, I'll pick up Trinity and my Sakonis and my tank top and I'll walk smooth about it don't, please don't. please don't do that two complete rounds three if y'all feeling it if, if, if you got it but just two complete rounds don't share no rounds don't try to get off on each other or get off with each other like that shit's corny don't nobody want to see that don't do that I want to see a battle I want to see a fight again I say this has the potential to be the battle of the year so like I said I'm edging it in favor of Rex on the basis that Livewire might be a little bit rusty and Rex has been constantly picking up momentum and constantly developing his craft. So his ability to um, develop or adapt in a moment's notice or his lab may be, may be a little bit sharper or quick on the uptake. So that's what I got for that battle. But uh, as they say, I ain't putting it past Livewire. Then, of course, the last battle that we have for the night can also be potentially arguable for Battle of the Year. Has an obvious chance for being Battle of the Night. It's the main event. And we recently switched that battle up as well because originally it was Fern Gully versus Sister Soul. But now we have Sister Soul versus Bewildered. just water. Don't play with me. It's, again, I, I don't need to go into these, these people's their characteristics and their styles and stuff like that. You should know by now. If you don't, do your research. Do your research. I Easily two of the uh, most deadliest people out of the South, for damn sure. My prediction for this battle, I'm edging this to Bewilder. I edge this battle to Bewilder on the premise solely because of the consistency and the execution in high stakes battles. Very similar in some ways to the same way that I looked at Rex versus Livewire. But the soul has been extremely extremely developing her craft in these last couple months so i can't say that she's necessarily in the same realm as livewire which in, in my personal opinion I don't, I don't have any doubt that livewire is laughing just jumping back to that for a second i don't i don't think that he's not laughing but i i personally know and there's even some footage here like if you have not seen sister soul dance you need to go watch the new era's legacy session like Just go watch it, okay? Trust me when I say this. The reason I say that is because Sister Soul, Sister Soul is no slacker. And I, and I gotta be transparent in, in, in this particular battle, the way I'm looking at this. And I know y'all are gonna jump out, the, jump out on the window on me on this one. I, I know y'all are, but I feel like I'm watching two Style Rippers battle. And that, that's no disrespect to Scissor Souls, Fams, Lady S. Dot, Lady C4. 
Stay, stay with your camps. Stay with your camps. Don't, don't do that. I'm, I'm not trying to drop no dimes, no, no plugs, no nothing like that. I ain't trying to put no recommendation, no resumes, no, in no way, shape, form, or fashion. My resume barely fit, speaks for itself. But if you know Sister Soul, if you know Destiny, if you know Vishanda, in her own way, I feel like she be ripping niggas' styles. That's just me. That's not me trying to tell it, hey, go over here. No, I just feel like when I'm watching these two battles, like. I think personally, this is going to be a tooth and nail battle. I'll definitely say bewildering. A little style rip. J Theory. Don't sleep, bro. I know you don't, but don't sleep. Stay up. Stay woke. This battle has genuinely rocked the Crump community. And I look forward to it. Because I, I genuinely have no idea about this battle. All the other battles that I call, there are certain variables that, that that can play a particular effect. But I know Bewilder don't play when it when it when it comes to, to battles for sure. His his execution is almost flawless, all but flawless. I know you can't say someone's flawless, but it's pretty damn near close. I don't see him make mistakes in his movements. And he's very calculated in how he prepares to battle people. And I know this motherfucker's laughing right now. I know he is. I know he is. Sister Soul as well. I know she's preparing. You know, every every day I, I keep seeing a picture that a C4 posts of her, you know, laughing and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, I see his photos more than I see my own Facebook photos, so... It's definitely gonna be one of those battles, but like I said, I, I'm I'm edging it to to be bewildered. I think that's gonna be an extremely steep battle. You gonna have to watch everything in that one. It, it's definitely gonna be a race to see who catches the momentum first, because in, in a lot of ways, they're very similar. Very very similar. And extremely deadly. So, hats off to both of them. I don't know who's going to take that battle. Like I said, my prediction goes to be Wilder, but that one's up there. So, well, that's it, y'all. Those are all the battles for the prediction list. Um, it is what it is. And on a side note, I did not, pur I purposely did not do uh, Me and Guns. Doing a battle re review for Me and Guns, that would be kind of strange. That, that seems kind of conceited, dare I say. So if somebody wants to do their own personal review, yo, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. You know, give me your thoughts on what you think. You know, who's going to win that battle? Is it going to be a landslide, one round? What do our styles look like? What do we look like to you? Okay, please don't call me a big man. I'm trying to lose weight. Stop playing with me. Like, don't call me a big man. I find that disrespectful. Please don't. Don't play with me. So, King of the Ring. I'll see y'all on the weekend of the 16th. Holla at you. Boop! Yeah, don't forget, now is the banger.